Hey everyone, it's Kong again, and here's the fifth issue of The Langrisser Lookout. Let's go ahead and start with the Community News Roundup. On the PvE front, we just got Major Update 18, which came with a whole bunch of bugs and problems. From the misleading Destiny Banner fakeout, to reverting some previously good translations back to bad ones. We now have two Olivier's again, and Leon's Blue Dragon Carapace body armor is called Blue Dragon Headgear for some reason. And heck, even reverting some translations back to Chinese text entirely, Zilong has their hands full of stuff to fix now. Of course, since it's a major update, that means we also have a newsletter waiting for us in our email, or our spam folders. So make sure you go and check and get the little promo code for some sweet loot. And if you haven't already signed up in-game for these newsletters, then you should go ahead and do that. It's under Info, and then FAQs, and then you can put your email address or contact info in there. Now as far as new stuff, global servers finally got their hands on new exclusive gear for Gizarov and Serena. Gizarov gets a wand that adds a random renovation to his construct whenever he uses a skill. And Serena gets a suit of armor that basically upgrades her guard talent. It lets her guard up to 3 range now, and it relaxes the restraints on who she's allowed to guard. Instead of requiring that their soldiers are dead, it just requires that they be under 80% health. We also got some new 3 cost skills. So Ares and Maya launched with theirs, and then Hein, Leden, and Ren got new ones. Hein's is a terrain effect AoE that reduces mobility for enemies who land on an affected tile. Leden's lets him activate his guard and conversion for four turns. Then he teleports an enemy beside him, and attacks them, and reduces mobility and guard for adjacent enemies. Ren gets a three-line AoE that knocks enemies back and nerfs their defenses. In metagame news, the State of Langrisser M community survey concluded on Wednesday with almost 600 responses. I'm just summarizing and cleaning up the data now before diving into some deeper analysis, so stay tuned for some interesting tidbits soon. On the PvP front, the official Apex Arena playoffs concluded last week, so congrats to the winner Royley on becoming the first two-time champion in Apex Arena history. That is an impressive achievement. In other interesting official Apex news, Zilong has confirmed to the strategy squad that they'll be adding an additional Apex time slot. This new window will be open from 3am to 6am server time, and it'll start this coming weekend on Saturday, June 13th. This was a popular demand, and it's a huge win for global players who don't happen to find themselves in North America. This week also saw the launch of the weird new Magic Tower pseudo auto chess mode, and you should go do it. It seems like a bit of a chore, but it does feature some pretty great rewards for minimal, albeit time-consuming effort. It seems to be getting mixed reception though. A lot of people vocally hate it, but a lot of top PvP players are giving it a lot of attention and jockeying for the top 100 places for big ranking rewards. I'm not sure how much of this is just due to the fact that Apex is on hiatus right now, so we'll see next weekend. And then in community tourney news, Noob Pianist's Invitational Tournament is kicking off this weekend as well. The Round Robins won't be streamed, but you will be able to catch replays on Leo Smart's YouTube channel. The Summit Der Langrisser 2 Round Robins technically start today, Monday, as well. Although I believe a lot of people started doing their matches yesterday. Now that this tournament is underway, we have a better idea of what the structure will look like. For one, there are over 200 people registered. So because of this, there are actually going to be two rounds of pools. Round 1 lasts a week and features over 50 groups of 3 to 4 people each. The top two people from each pool will advance to another round robin stage, with the top two from that group finally moving on to a top 64 single elimination phase. Streaming and YouTube coverage might be a bit spotty for the round robins simply because there are so many matches happening, but when the top 64 rolls around I believe we're going to make an effort to cover every match. I'll put a link to the brackets and the Discord in the description below if you'd like to follow along. Okay, that's it for the news, so let's move on to the Kong update for June 8th. I'll start with a summoning update, and kind of like last time, it was a rough couple weeks. So first we had the Juggler, Landius, and Yulia banner, and I got my guaranteed Juggler in 60 summons, which is not too bad. It's a bit worse than average, but he was guaranteed for me, so that's fine. 
Then we have the new characters on the Maya and Ares banner. This started off not great because my first pull was Sigma in 50 summons, and I had been sharding up Claret to get a guaranteed Sigma on the Valentine's Day trade-in banners. So as far as off-banner pulls, he was kind of the worst one that I could get. But of course I continued on and got Ares in another 70 summons. And trying to get a copy of Maya, I did another 100 summons and just got Ares again at pity. So total on that banner was 220 summons for two Ares and a Sigma. This actually brought my lifetime summoning rate down to 1.86, which is of course a little bit below the 2% average. Now for an Awakening update, I fully awakened Juggler as soon as I got him, and then I fully awakened Ares too. I also fully awakened Leaden, mostly because I could, but partly because I wanted to see what his 3C could do in that Magic Tower mode. I also have an exciting subscriber update. I did hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube on Friday morning, which means that we've unlocked community features. And that means I only get to gate up two characters now. The third one belongs to you. It also means it's time for me to start taking dolphin lessons so I can fulfill my promise of pulling one SSR from each current banner. I'm going to let the Ares banner cool down a little bit before trying to touch it again, so look for this celebration video and the first community poll with my Gates Fate options later this week. And of course, thanks for all your support and all your kind comments. So now it's time for the grind. This is where I talk about my 5 Gs. My goals, my gear, my Gates, my grunts, and my group. My goals are what I'm working towards right now. And the main PvE things that I still have left are cracking the level 70 Eternal Temples, particularly Phoenix since it looks like I have most of the protagonist puzzle pieces, including Ares who I just added and who I think might be useful in this once he gets his Defense Bond and his Heart Bond unlocked. I'm also considering trying to build up some more AoE threats, since I really only have Bozal for that purpose right now, and more AoE could help me in a lot of content, like higher level Timeless Trials for example. So next we'll look at my gear, and the last two weeks have actually been bananas for me for gear. I got my second Scarlet Reaper from a map event. I got my second Fury of Tear from a Dragon Sweep, so I can give this back to Landius since Deedlet stole his previous one. I got my first Cloak of Defiance from a Shop Gamble. I got my second Queen Scepter from a Dragon Sweep, so this will be for Deedlet since I don't have a Gift of Eternal Life yet. I got my second Judge's Talisman from a Memory Shard Gamble, and I can build this up for Ares. I got my... I got my fifth King's Crown from a Shop Gamble. I actually got my third and fourth last rites. One from a Gamble and one from a Dragon Sweep. So it's like the game knew I summoned Juggler and he needed a last rites. And I summoned an Ares and he needed a last rites. I got my first Monkey King's Vest which completes my armor collection, not counting unique gear from the Secret Realm Shop. And what else did I get that's new? I got my third Slayer's Emblem from Timeless Trials. I got my second set of Winged Shin Guards. And I got my fourth and fifth Ragnarok. One from a Gamble and one from a Dragon Sweep. So, rolling in good new gear actually for the last two weeks, and I think this luck more than makes up for the fact that I haven't gotten any SSRs from joint battles in the past two weeks, and kind of I guess counterbalances some rough summoning luck. Now for Gates, Tiaris hit 5 star in the last couple weeks, obviously with a bit of room to spare to get her up a little bit closer to 6 star. And Omega hit 4 star. And as I mentioned earlier, I also farmed up 50 Claret Shards in advance of the Valentine's trade-in banners to get a free Sigma, but then Sigma showed up unannounced when I was trying to summon for Ares. So I went ahead and made her 4 star now. And um, instead I'll summon on the Knight of Mystery and Lanford trade-in banner. So whoever I get from that one, 
I can hopefully take the time while the banner is still on to shard them up enough to trade for the other one. So now for grunts. I was kind of taking a balanced approach to my training the last couple of weeks. Um, in terms of my main progress, for cavalry I topped up their attack a little bit. And I also um, maxed group charge. And then I got high speed and the other two techs over here, fine steel hooves and rapid route, up to level 5. So they're all level 5, which is a nice jumping off point for future building and development. Uh, for my flyer and aqua training, I again took the kind of steady, balanced approach and just leveled each of the core and joint nodes by one. So if I manage to summon Maya during Summon Fest later this week, um, which would allow me to fully invest in Ares, then I'll probably focus on maxing Steel Wings next, just because they're a good troop for him and I'd like them to be strong. And finally, for my group, I immediately maxed Juggler's Bonds as soon as I got him. And then I did as much work as I could on Ares without having Maya for his defensive bond, and of course his heart bond's not available yet. So those were the two main things that I did for bonds in the last couple weeks. And with the 5 Gs out of the way, that's actually going to be it for the Kong update. And therefore, that's going to be it for this issue of the Langrisser Lookout. So thanks so much for watching, and thanks for all your feedback and advice and support in the comments. Stay tuned for my subscriber celebration probably on Wednesday. And then for the next episode of Should You Summon later this week. And then of course I'll catch you in the next Langrisser Lookout. Happy Langrissing, everyone.